Hello, my name is Kurt Brown, also known as St. Rambo, former FDIC bank examiner and investigative journalist on government crimes and finance and medicine. I'm here to talk about murder inside the federal banking regulatory industry and the robbing of the American people and the working classes, basically the entire government. Federal banking fraud's judge Thomas Crane Wills was killed in 2001 in his home. The FBI said it was anarchists, most likely. I say it was a paid hit. It was because he would not accept bribes or coercion in any form. He was a man probably of extreme integrity, and he was killed. Billions of dollars are involved in money laundering. <clears throat> There's a billions of dollars involved in money laundering and other crimes, including casinos and drugs, and drugs that are sold both nationally and internationally, and other crimes inside governments. And this is international comes to bear on the American government. There's been many people killed, including a Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation regional director who was killed in his office. It was in around 1991, probably 1990, 1991, killed in his office. They would not allow me to talk about it or allow others to talk about it to me. It was the same year as the FDIC Act of 1991. That was the year the FDIC began to be allowed to butcher banks. The key was early resolution. In 1999, they passed the Financial Services Modernization Act. That was with Clinton in power, which brings up a good Clinton, good question. Did they get to Clinton or did someone else pass this law? Perhaps from the Bush administration. After all, it's not really a democracy they hand the reins from one to another. I am concerned about the bribery because it's getting people killed and maimed and we're being robbed as a result of this. You have to realize when they make drugs, the simple case of this would be when they have drug laws that say well one state can sell marijuana for the price of gold and another one cannot even be caught with it in their yard, you create a situation where drugs will be dealt and money has to be laundered. That's the simplest case. I'm talking about international money laundering though and that's a lot more money than a little marijuana. It has to do with cocaine, heroin, and also just basically money laundering from other countries such as we saw with Bank of China out of Macau in 2004 with uh, Zhu Yul Gun and Zhu Chao Fan and Yu Zendong. Just this past week, I went. I am a former FDIC bank examiner, and for some reason, I'm not very well liked by the government. I've been harassed since 2001. I was terminated from the FDIC in 2000. I believe all FDIC bank examiners and security uh, and the Treasury Department, OCC bank examiners, banking regulators, should not allow to be terminated. The reason they terminate many of us is because they feel we would be problematic to them, meaning their structure of bribery because we are more intelligent or because we are more astute in our work or we are more loyal to the working classes very often or to the general public in the United States and the general condition, we were terminated. I was terminated in 2000 from the FDIC in San Francisco. They said it was poor performance, but what happened was I would not drop an EEOC complaint. In Hawaii, I was told to go to my boss's room by the boss I was working for at night I did not trust them because of the murder of the prior regional director at the FDIC in San Francisco and because of the money situation where there was always millions of dollars on the table at these bank exams. I would not go to the room. I was afraid of being tampered with medically or some other fashion. And I was terminated. I'd like to request the FDIC Board of Directors review what I'm saying. You should not terminate bank examiners once they're hired. There should be a contract stating they will be allowed to work. Do not hire them if you're going to fire them. Otherwise, you will have selective retention, selective termination. You will end up as myself, tortured and maimed, and I have had a stroke. Just this past week, I went to a clinic in Santa Cruz, California, to get health care. The reason I did not go to the VA, I have free health care, is because I was injected and tortured there in 2001. I was forced to sign documents, and I believe it was because of a bribe. I had fled Sheriff Jack Tillman of Mobile, Alabama, and the federal government there, and had went to Los Angeles, parked outside the LAVA Westwood. I had a U-Haul with me and all my belongings. I was injected, 
and basically tortured. They forced to sign documents and they were claiming I was a criminal. But what I had was information on Sheriff Jack Tillman and, and also an attack on my life after investigating the covered up murder at the FDIC from 1991. They had information on these things. I put it on video. I talked about it on video on the night of April 23, 2001 in front of the LAVA police in Westwood. None of this was ever brought up in court. I was basically put in exile for several years in a way. Actually was exile and they finally in the end I was having to live in Eureka, California. I would not live in Los Angeles. And I was injected again in Flagstaff Medical Center. I'd stopped to get a burn checked on my neck and have my car checked for radiation. In a way it was a test. I wanted to see what would happen. I was injected and knocked unconscious forcibly. I had signed my Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance papers, which I had at that time. I had insurance. And after I signed those papers, they came in and injected me and knocked me unconscious and held me for several days. Had it not been for my wife at that time in 2001 and 2004 to help me, I would not be speaking to you right now. I would probably be in an insane asylum or dead. Bribery is a part of life. Many of the American people are not used to it. When there's billions of dollars involved in this, we have got to protect our people. I recommend we get rid of negative capitalism, but I know it will not happen. What I think of as negative capitalism is predatory capitalism. That would include casinos. It would also include disparities in drug laws. And basically, the using of people as slaves in some form or another. Or the ratcheting them down to where they are nothing. You could also have, in that, would also include uh, um, the sale of people, which they do for various things around the globe. But the big thing is money laundering. Money laundering is big business, and some people do not realize it. They do not, they do not understand money laundering. They do not understand technology and the fact that we can be deceived. The government has made me, and this this past week, Within 2004, when I was injected at Flagstaff Medical Center in Arizona, or either also when I was injected in 2001 at LAVA Westwood, I had a stroke. It was diagnosed in 2004 after I was injected at Flagstaff Medical Center. I lost partial, part of my vision. It's not right what they've done to me. I need employment. I need health insurance. I should not have to go. I went to a Planned Parenthood clinic in Santa Cruz, California, to get some medical treatment because I was told I could go there to get treatment. What they did was they gave me a card so I could go to other facilities now. I do not have to use a VA. They killed some men in experiments at LAVA Westwood in 1999. Some veterans were killed in experiments. I would have rather had been killed and maimed and tortured and exiled as what happened to me. But God has it that I am here. I'm talking to you. Maybe I have this message to deliver. To warn these bank examiners, be very careful. You are nothing to these people. Billions of dollars in bribery, and the, and the decks are set. It's all like a card deck. They're all set, arranged. You cannot fight against them. Just this past week at that, at that facility in Santa Cruz, I was horrified. I went in at 11, and they told me to come back at 2. When I came back at 2, I believe there were some federal police there. They do not like me because they know I come forward on their crimes. When I was starting to leave, or actually when I saw the doctor, someone actually alluded to me that someone tried to bribe the doctor to say I was insane based on my handwriting. My handwriting is atrocious. I've had a stroke. Also, the board I was writing on was scratched up like it had been the, uh, I said the writing tablet I was writing on, filling out my paperwork and explaining my situation was scratched up like somebody had been cutting it. And I was extremely nervous because I haven't used public facility or hospital, state hospital health care since 2004 when I was forcibly injected and tortured in Flagstaff. I was glad that I was informed of this. A doctor told me it was because of my writing that it looked very scribbled. But I was extremely nervous. And like I said, I've had a stroke and my writing's not that good and the board was scratched. That's about all I can think of at this time. This is basically about bribery and the fact there's billions of dollars involved in this. Billions 
of dollars are involved in bribery in the federal banking regulatory industry. Judges are giving, getting killed. Federal bank examiners are being, getting killed. I am currently paid a small retirement. I would gladly work for the FDIC or the Treasury OCC, running my own audits and investigations, verifying paperwork is being handled, being handled to handle monitors to stop money laundering, including suspicious activity reports. I would also verify there was an inclusion and I could do a lot for the country. All I would ask is that the government pay me per diem and pay for my plane flights. I'd like to work again, but they aren't allowing me to work. I've been cast out and cast down because of bribery and corruption. I was brought into the LAV, no, I was brought into the FDIC. I believe because of this, because I brought a lot of skills, medical skills, auditing skills, military skills, and the skills of knowing how to deal with men in the street who are associated with criminal syndicates. You never drink from a stranger's open glass. And you keep your balls covered when there's money on the table and blood on the floor. And that's what I see at the FDIC. This is Kurt Brown, alias St. Rambon, founder, founder of the website Mobile Audit Club. Kurt Brown, alias St. Rambaugh, founder of the website Mobile Audit Club. Kurt Brown, alias St. Rambaugh, founder of the website Mobile Audit Club, saying beware of bribery. In the government, they're beating us down. I'm considering going to a holy land, a place that does not have casinos and drug dealers. Someone told me my life insurance wouldn't pay if I was killed there. I don't believe my life insurance would pay if I was killed here. I've seen so much corruption and bribery, I don't believe anything anymore. This is Kurt Brown, A.D. St. Rambo, Mobile Audit Club, saying stop the bribery. If you can get rid of these casinos, get rid of these international drug dealers, you basically get rid of predatory practices and negative capitalism and bring back positive capitalism, which would be like using the genius of the human mind. By using technology, we can actually train ourselves or train our young to be prepared for the future. The way we're going, we're not going to make it. Otherwise, we'll probably die. Negative capitalism has a dead-end road, and we'll all pay the price and be injured by it in the end. I was injured by it. I did not deserve to be locked up in 2001. I did not deserve to be tortured and injected in 2001 or in 2004. It wasn't right. Had I not had a wife to help me, I'd be in jail to this day or in an insane asylum. Simply because I have inside information on what was going on. What is ironic is that in 2001, the federal government ignored my video recorded statement regarding Sheriff Jack Tillman of Mobile, Alabama being a food fund thief who was starving his inmates. They also ignored the fact that when I called 911 in 2001 in February after I'd been attacked and then I contacted the federal government telling them I'd been attacked and it was likely involving the FDIC, they never contacted me. Instead, they tortured me. I'm considering going to a holy nation. I wish you people well. I do believe, though, we can change this if we teach our young to use the tools given to them, the Internet, and use invention and creation to make a better world for us all. Negative capitalism is going to leave us all wounded, dead, maimed, jailed, imprisoned, the entire gamut. This is Kurt Brown, A.S. St. Rambone. Sorry for the false end a moment ago. A slight interruption. Mobile Audit Club, Google search us. Mobile Audit Club, Google search us. See the Quatrains 12 and Loveline 12 page. See the Quatrains 12 and Loveline 12 page at Mobile Audit Club found by Google search. I was in a stroke condition for many years and it have, the site was hacked. I'm currently cleaning it up. You'll find the most recent stuff during the past year. I'm trying to contain my emotions. After all, I was harmed with injections and I'm not sure what else they did to me. I hope I can find work again. I will work for per diem, auditing banks again with my current salary. I want to be a freelance. 
I want to peruse FDIC and Treasury offices for corruption to make sure they also make sure paperwork is handled. Mobile Audit Club, 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 Mobile Audit Club.